Hello guys, how are you getting on? My name is Aaron Kelly and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about football because there's been a lot going on in the footballing world in the last week or so that I've stayed uncharacteristically quiet about. So we've got two kind of big topics to talk about in this video and we're going to get on to Chelsea and a bit of exciting transfer news at the end of the video. We're going to start today's video talking about the fact that the Premier League is confirmed to be returning on the 17th of this month. Ladies and gentlemen, it feels like it has been a long time coming, and let's be honest, it has. We are finally going to get to see the 2019-20 Premier League season come to its conclusion in a natural way. Obviously, the rest of the games are going to be played behind closed doors, and I suppose in this video I want to talk about how the, the season is going to finish, what implications and what new things have been brought in. Um, so yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. So I'm currently on the website Sports Illustrated and uh, they're talking about obviously the return to the Premier League and underneath here they have a leaked UK TV schedule of um, you know the remaining fixtures for the Premier League and as has been confirmed since then, a lot of these games are going to be played one after the other, like it's going to be a game every couple of days. It's literally going to be like the fucking World Cup, boys. I genuinely can't wait. Starting off with Wednesday, June 17th, as Aston Villa face Sheffield United and Manchester City host Arsenal. And obviously, big implications at the top being that if Manchester City lose that game to Arsenal, Liverpool can win the title on the 21st when they travel across the fucking, whatever you call it, the Stanley Park to uh, face Everton at Goodison Park. So Liverpool can clinch the title against Everton. I mean, that would be just incredible. But on a personal note for Chelsea, we return on the 21st of June on Sunday against Aston Villa at Villa Park. Following that, then we've got Manchester City, then West Ham. And literally, lads, there is fixtures every couple of days. Like, it's going to be absolutely incredible, to be fair. And... I'm just looking forward to the return of the Premier League verdict where I can just sit down and chat shit about fucking Chelsea every week again. It's going to be a madness. So I kind of referenced it already. There are going to be quite a few in-game changes with the Premier League. And obviously, they've had to take inspiration from the Bundesliga that have you know come back earlier than everybody else. So there's a little paragraph here on the in-game changes that are going to be occurring within the Premier League. So I'll just uh, I'll read it out for you now. And uh, you can see what you think. As has been adopted by the Bundesliga, the Premier League announced Thursday that it is taking the International Football Association board up on its temporary amendment to the laws of the game and allowing for five substitutes per game instead of the customary three. With the expanded substitutions comes expanded match day squads. Clubs can feature nine players on the bench in uniform instead of the usual seven. Given the sprint to the finish line for the remaining games of the season, managers will surely make sure the expanded squads and added in-game flexibility in order to keep players fresh and avoid injury. Now, obviously, it's kind of it's it's going to be a little bit like the players are coming back, you know, at the end of like pre-season. They're they're probably not going to be definitely straight away. They're probably not going to be at their absolute you know peak match match sharpness. So I can see why this change has been brought in. My only worry is that it disrupts the flow of the game a little bit because like five substitutes like you think of how many times unless they make multiple substitutions at the one time but you know if they do start making them like one 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 like that could that could disrupt the the flow of the game and and obviously as we know lads in football matches a, a lot of the time momentum is a very important thing to you know keep a note of so i don't know how well that's going to work i mean only time will tell but I can definitely see where they're coming from and bringing in the five substitutes. Another change that will be happening will be the introduction of uh, matches being played at neutral venues. There's another um, paragraph on this, so I'll read that as well. The use of neutral venues for select matches has been reportedly approved, with clubs voting on the contentious issue on Thursday. It's unspecified as to what specific matches will be getting the treatment, though Liverpool's first few matches are reported to be candidates, with authorities not trusting the club's fans to remain socially distanced and restrained enough while celebrating what appears to be an inevitable title I mean Liverpool would love to I mean if they're not going to win the title at Goodison Park they'd love to be able to clinch that moment at Anfield so I think if, you know they won't they won't want to be playing their you know the game that clinches the title for them in fucking Wembley or something like that you know what I mean but yeah I'm not overly sure about the need for that but 
I don't know, maybe. Premier League has also come out and said there uh, will be no punishments for protests because obviously all the stuff that's going on uh, over in the US at the minute with the murder of George Floyd, etc, etc. Um, and there's been so many protests over the last week, week and a half, two weeks. Um, and that's made its way into football, of course. There's been a couple of um, players in the Bundesliga who have... Um, made their voice heard, obviously Jaden Sancho being one of them. After FIFA signalled its support for players in the Bundesliga who have showed signs of solidarity after the killing of George Floyd, uh, the English FA followed by echoing the sentiments and giving the Premier League players a platform to follow suit. Where any behaviours or gestures on the pitch that may constitute a breach of the laws of the game have to be assessed, they will be reviewed on the case by case basis with a common sense approach and understanding of their context. The FA said in a statement, the, powerful, the power of football can break down barriers across communities and we remain deeply committed to removing all forms of discrimination from across the game we all love. So, yeah, quite simply, a bit of common sense there. A number of clubs have already shown support, with Chelsea, Liverpool and Newcastle posting photos of teams in training taking knees. Manchester United's Paul Pogba and Newcastle's DeAndre Yedlin are among the many individual players to speak out publicly, publicly while Yedlin and Chelsea and US star Christian Pulisic appeared in a powerful and graphic video featuring a number of other US international titled Enough is Enough. So yeah, obviously, rightfully so. Um, no punishment for any players that want to portray the message that needs to be portrayed, obviously, and a, a very powerful one. So, so yeah, that's how football is going to return then. Games every couple of days, a lot of changes to rules, potential neutral venues in which matches are going to be played. Um, so I'm just going to end this video now by talking a little bit about what it's a bit of exciting transfer news for Chelsea this week. And uh, it looks as though Chelsea have completed a 60 million euro or pound signing of uh, Timo Werner from RB Leipzig um, when it looked inevitable that he was going to sign uh, for Liverpool. If this deal happens, obviously Chelsea and Leipzig have agreed the fee, it's not, it's not confirmed yet. If this deal happens, this is an, an amazing signing by, by Chelsea. It really is. I feel like one thing we've really lacked since since even Diego Costa left is a really clinical out and out striker and Timo Werner for years has been doing it in Germany he he looks like the real deal he's quick he's you know he's got a really good finish on him i mean it looks like the the perfect signing and it doesn't even look like Frank is finished there with more news coming out that Chelsea could be going after uh, Leicester City's left back Ben Chilwell, which would again be a fucking amazing signing and tells me so far that Chelsea really do mean business in this summer transfer market. And I know Giroud did well before the end of like before the start of lockdown and Tammy Abraham has had a very very good breakout season with Chelsea, but it's like are we can we really rely on either one of Giroud and or Tammy to be the man? Like the man who's going to get you 20 Premier League goals? to fire you towards a Premier League title because that's where Chelsea need to be. Chelsea need to not be this team that's fighting for top four. Chelsea need to be fighting for titles. And that that was the vision that Roman had when he came in all those years ago. And in the last, you know, year or so, Chelsea have definitely dropped off. But this could be the start. And obviously with Hakim Ziyech coming in as well, that's two very fucking solid attacking signings. If Chelsea can get a really good defender, whether it be a Ben Chilwell, whether it be a Khalidou Koulibaly, I think we do need a centre-back as well. Timo Werner could be the start of a lot of big, big signings coming into Chelsea. And if, if we do get what I've said we need, no reason why Chelsea cannot uh, challenge for the title next year. But it is so admirable... How the Chelsea board have handled this. Obviously getting Ziyech over the line I think back in January. For him to come in obviously um, next season. And now get looks like we've just snatched Timo Werner from under the noses of Liverpool. And if, we, if, we, if the deal goes through and we manage it. It could be 
a fucking stroke of genius of a signing. It's just incredible to me how we, we managed to do this. Like, how have we beaten Liverpool to it? Like, obviously, Liverpool were dilly-dallying uh, for a long time with uh, with Timo Werner and not trying to play hardball with Leipzig, essentially, when they, they really didn't need to. It was, it was the sake of them not paying the 10 million extra that RB Leipzig wanted them to pay. And, uh, yeah, as a result, it looks like we could be getting one of the best center forwards in Europe right now. So, I mean, it's unbelievable, really. <laughs> All right, so boys, that is my thoughts on uh, the most recent football news. Let me know your thoughts on how you think the Premier League finish season is going to finish and how do you think it's going to work with all the new kind of rules and regulations coming in. And uh, Chelsea fans, let me know what you think of this potential Timo Werner signing. I say potential because it is not done yet. We've agreed a £60 million fee. The man himself has still got to agree to come to the club, but... Um, let me know what you think of that potential Werner sign and, and any other potential signings that uh, Chelsea could be getting. Ben Chilwell, Koulibaly, etc. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you are new around here, and I will catch you later. Bye.